The tale of witches is one that we have all deemed fairy tales and haven't even given much thought to. But what if I say there is some level of truth to that tale? What if I said there really were witches in history and some even reached the Second World War? Would you be interested in a story like that? Welcome back to the Told You Another Story channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the story of the Night Witches of the Second World War. Before you let your imagination run wild at the possible idea of witches ever existing, you should probably know that this story isn't about actual witches who wield magic as a tool to bend people to their will. This is history, not some Disney movies. However, this story is just as interesting. As previously stated, the term Night Witches goes back to the Second World War and was originally a World War II German moniker for the all-female military pilots of the 588th. Night Bomber Regiment, later known as the 46th Taman Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment of the Soviet Air Forces. This regiment owes its formation to the efforts of a military woman known as Major Marina Raskova. Marina Raskova was the first woman ever in the Soviet Union to attain the diploma of professional air navigation. She went from being a young woman with dreams of becoming an opera singer to being a military instructor to the Soviet's first female navigator. She became the navigator to several record-setting and record-breaking flights, as well as the founding and commanding officer of the 587th Bomber Aviation Regiment, which was later named the 125th M.M. Raskova Borisov Guards Dive Bomber Regiment in her honor. At the time of the Second World War, women were officially banned from combat. However, Marina Raskova used her position in the military and her personal connections with the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin to acquire permission to create all-female combat units. It was described as combat facilitated and ushered in a reluctant acceptance of women in the military based more upon practicality and necessity than for equality. In October 1941, Marina Raskova received the authority to choose candidates for the 122nd Composite Air Group, an all-female aviation regiment. She had already set several world records in long-distance non-stop flights and was often known as the Russian Amelia Earhart for her many achievements. When the Germans invaded in 1941, several young women started writing letters to Marina Raskova asking her how they could best serve their nation using their flight skills. When the Second World War broke out, there were many women who had trained as pilots and many others immediately volunteered. While there were no official restrictions on women serving in military combat roles, their applications usually ended up being blocked, run into red tape, or something of that sort for as long as possible in order to discourage the applicants. With that in mind, Marina used her personal connection with Joseph Stalin to obtain the necessary permission to establish the regiment. Joseph Stalin was very quick to approve of this initiative as he had a general interest in the women's tremendous international propaganda value. Following a speech by Major Marina on September 8, 1941, calling for women pilots to be permitted to fight, Joseph Stalin ordered the formation of the all-female 122nd Aviation Corps on October 8, 1941. With that order, women got the chance not only to be pilots, but also to be support staff and engineers. This led to the formation of three regiments, the 586th Fighter Aviation Regiment, the 587th Bomber Aviation Regiment, and the 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment. This happened at a time when women weren't believed to be at an advantage in combat compared to their male counterparts. As you have probably guessed, at first, this all-female aviation regiment wasn't welcomed into the military with open arms, as they had probably expected. A lot of their male counterparts believed they were inferior and treated them with a general lack of respect. As if that wasn't bad enough, the women of the regiment were also given hand-me-downs of uniforms and oversized shoes by the men, as well as rudimentary tools such as flashlights, pencils, and rulers that lacked the luxury that their fellow male soldiers received with their tools. The 588th Regiment led by Major Yevdokia Bershanskaya was made up of primarily female volunteers in their late teens and early 20s. An attack method of the night bombers included idling the engine near the target and gliding to the bomb release point with only wind noise left to reveal their presence. As a result, German soldiers equated the sound to boomsticks, giving these pilots the moniker Night Witches. Due to the bomb's weight and the low flight altitude, the pilots did not carry parachutes until 1944. 
The 588th Regiment flew harassment and precision bombing missions against the German military, beginning from 1942 until the end of the Second World War in 1945. At its largest size, the regiment had 42 person crews and they flew over 23,000 sorties, dropping over 26,000 incendiary shells and 3,000 tons of bombs. It was the most highly decorated female unit in the Soviet Air Force, with many pilots having flown over 800 missions by the end of the war and 23 having been awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union title. 32 of its members died during the war. The 588 Regiment flew in wood and canvas Polycarpov U-2 biplanes. This was a 1928 design projected for use as training aircraft, hence its original Uchebny designation prefix of U. And for crop dusting, which also had a special U-2 LNB version for the sort of night harassment attack missions flown by the 588th. The plane could only carry 770 pounds, 350 kilograms of bombs. So eight or more missions per night were often necessary. Although the aircraft was slow and obsolete, the pilots took advantage of this extraordinary maneuverability. It also had a max speed that was way lower than the stalling speed of both the Messerschmitt Bf 109 and the Focke-Wulf FW-190, making it very difficult for German pilots to shoot down with the exception of fighter ace Joseph Kokiok who grounded the regiment for an entire night by shooting down three or four of their planes on the night of July 31st to August 1st, 1943. When the regiment was deployed on the front lines in June 1942, the 588th Night Bomber Regiment became part of the 4th Air Army of the Southern Front. In February 1943, the regiment was honored with the Guards designation and reorganized as the 46th Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment in the 325th Night Bomber Aviation Division, 4th Air Army, 2nd Belarusian Front. In October 1943, it became the 46th Taman Guard Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, Taman referring to the unit's involvement in the Novorossiysk Taman operations on the Taman Peninsula during 1943. The other two regiments created at the time were the 586th Fighter Aviation Regiment, which used Yak-1 fighters, and the 587th Bomber Aviation Regiment, which used twin-engine PE-2 dive bombers. Later, the unit received the Guards designation and was reorganized as the 125th Guards Bomber Aviation Regiment. Although all three regiments had been proposed to have women exclusively, none remained all-female. The 586th and 588th regiments hired male mechanics, particularly the 586th, because none of the women had received training to work on the Yakolev fighter planes before the war. The 586th female commander, Major Tamara Alexandrovna Kazarinova, was replaced by a male commander, Major Alexander Vasilevich Gridnev, in October 1942. The 587th Regiment was initially under the control of Major Marina Raskova, but after her demise in 1943, a male commanding officer, Major Valentin Markov, replaced her. The 587th Regiment's Petyalkov PE-2 dive bombers also needed a tall person to operate the top rear machine gun, but there were not enough women recruited who were tall enough, and this caused some men to join the air crews as radio operators and tail gunners. The 588's regiment staff driver and searchlight operatives were also male. In 1917, Russia was the first nation to declare legal equality for women, allowing them to enter military service. Women were fundamentally equal to men in both rights and responsibilities as Russian citizens, as social equality was a basic part of the communist ideology. However, the ideology was not always exhibited in practice, which is seen time and time again, especially through times of war whether it be prior, during, or after. A common dilemma for these women grew out of the social pressures of deciding to prioritize the family over an aviation or military career. Irina Rakobolskaya, a pilot with the 588th Regiment, rationalized the difficult reality and challenges she faced to pursue both a family and a piloting career. She stated, I think that during the war, when the fate of our country was being decided, the bringing in of women into aviation was justified. But in peacetime, a woman can only fly for sport. Otherwise, how can one combine a career with a family and with maternal happiness? Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.